Hi, this is Alex. In this video, I'm going to paint a pair of sunflowers. Here's a reference photo, uh, just in case you want to paint yourself. Some people have asked me for a reference photo in the past, so here it is. All right, so this is a fairly complex subject, but I'm painting on a pretty small board. This is 8 by 10. So I'm going to try to keep things kind of loose and try to finish this up in under an hour. So I'm going to start off with some burnt umber and uh, some ultramarine blue to make kind of a dark drawing color. Mix that with some linseed oil. And I'm just going to block in my general drawing for the, the two sunflowers. I'm using a tinted uh, MDF board uh, that is gessoed and then what I've done is I just from my previous painting session I scraped off all of the um, leftover oil paint that I had mixed it together and just rubbed it into the into the gesso and so that created this nice brown surface and I like to paint on a tinted surface just because it's sort of it gives me a little shortcut to having a surface that doesn't have any white on it. Usually if it's a white surface, uh, the very first thing that I want to do is just try to get rid of all the white so that I can have control of my lightest light. In this case, I can just start with a darkened surface and work into it. I find it easier. And uh, the board itself, uh, this is... Uh, uh, MDF, uh, I think it stands for a medium density fiber board that I uh, just got at a Home Depot and cut it into you know different pieces and then gessoed it. And I usually do about two to three layers of gesso just to make sure I have a nice consistent surface. All right, so let's take a look at that reference photo now. I'm not painting from a photo, I just, I like to paint from real life. So this photo may not be exactly the right angle, but it's close enough that you can take a look at it and sort of follow along. So as you can see, there's a lot of detail on the sunflowers. There's all these whiskers and all these bumps and everything. And I am definitely getting a little bit carried away with, uh, with all those details. But it's all right, at least I'm finding where everything sits on the board. The main goal when you're doing this kind of drawing for a painting is, well, there, there's two goals really. One is you want to identify where things are on the canvas. And so you want to kind of define what your composition is going to be. And uh, two, you want to sort of give yourself a little foundation for the structure of things because once you start applying paint keeping track of track of structure is um, a little bit more difficult and uh, what you saw me do just now is I, I had to adjust one of the leaves because I wasn't able to see the the underside of the the, the front sunflower and that was sort of messing up my so the sense of structure of the sunflower itself. So that's one small difference between the reference photo and what I actually wound up painting just because I, I took that leaf that, that's sort of covering the front and moved it out of the way. Anyway, the structure of the sunflower is pretty simple. It's basically a disc uh, with uh, a stem coming out of it. So. There's not a lot to it, but you do need to um, be able to see that shape through all the details and get it on paper, or rather on, uh, you know, on board, uh, in order for it to look real and sort of dimensional. All right, there's a few little leaves here and there, and the whiskers and it gets a little dense when the two sunflowers come together but 
really I just want to find the ones that stick out and put them in because those are the ones that you're going to be able to see after after I start filling in the colors. All right, that's probably enough. Um, there's little bumps on the bottom of the sunflower, which I really like. Now, you might be asking, why am I painting sunflowers that don't really look like the typical sunflower, which is the bright yellow petals and black center. And I mean, first of all, I had these sunflowers. These came out of my garden and I'm planning to collect seeds from them. And uh, second, it's sometimes it's nice to paint things that are not typical, you know, that have a unique quality to them. That's kind of what I like about them is that you know, if you go on Google and do a search for a sunflower painting, you'll get a whole bunch of things that look very similar. I bet you won't find something that looks like this. All right, so now I'm going to uh, work a little bit on the background color. I'm getting some ultramarine blue, some burnt umber, and mix that with some white. And the goal is just to create that kind of dark gray. And uh, I'm not really using any black here, uh, just because I like to make my own black, my own grays. And it sort of forces you to um, be a little bit more disciplined about your colors and make sure there's enough color in the paint, in the, in the grays that you're making. So here, because I have to balance the blue, the brown, the yellow, the, the white, you know, I'm going to come up with something that's more interesting than just mixing black and white together and slapping it on the canvas. And then you notice I've added a little bit of uh, yellow ochre to this as well, just to warm that up a little bit and uh, make it pull it a little bit more towards the green. So I'm just going to roughly block in the background. There's not a lot of it, but it's going to help to uh, define the overall composition. You want to start with your darks and work your way towards the lights. And uh, that's kind of just a general rule in oil paint because um, it's a lot uh, easier to go lighter than it is to go darker. Once you have some white on the canvas, making that area darker is just going to be a pain in the butt. So not a lot to see. I think when it comes to those, those feathery details of the sunflower, um, there's really not a need to get into a lot of those details with the, you know, sort of outlining it with the background color because uh, they'll be painted in with a lighter color later on. So might as well just kind of go over paint a little bit and create a, a nice sort of consistent background color. And I'm also using that same background color, the same dark, dark gray to drop in some of the shadows, even though they're not exactly dark gray, but you can just use just about any dark color for the shadows. So now I'm going to uh, make a lighter gray color and uh, I'm going to use that as the base of the forward facing sunflower where you actually see the sunflower seeds. So I'm going to get a base color and then I'll work into that with some more details. And this is just a, this is my same gray mixture with just a little bit more yellow ochre and some white. I'm just adjusting it as I go along. And that sunflower is darker towards the middle, so I'm going to throw some darker gray in the middle now. And just quickly block in the rest of the color. Still not focusing too much on details, just trying to get 
most of the canvas or board uh, covered in paint. It's really the brightest towards the kind of outer perimeter. And as I'm applying this paint, I'm just uh, keeping in mind the texture of the sunflower and not really doing kind of very wide, broad strokes, but more kind of smaller individual strokes that reflect the, the way the seeds are laying on the, you know, on that surface. And it's not quite time to get into a lot of details so I'm just going to lay down a few strokes here and there, focusing mainly on the overall tone and how, uh, how dark or light those areas are. There's a little bit of a concavity in the middle of the sunflower where it sort of dips down. So that dark actually helps to push that back. I'll come back to this and add more texture later. And then uh, next, I'd like to get the rest of the greenery in. The sunflower on the left is mostly green. It has a brighter green on the outer edge and uh, more of a pale green on the back and the stem. So I'm going to get a new brush, get some white, titanium white, some uh, cadmium yellow pale. A little bit of yellow ochre. And uh, just to push that color down a little bit, just brought in a little bit of that gray that I had from the background color. And sometimes you just gotta put it on the painting surface to see what color it actually is because it'll look different on the palette compared to what you see on the painting. So I'm just gonna quickly just sketch some stuff out on there, just lay a few strokes of this, this lighter green and uh, then come in with the other colors and see how they look next to each other and just make sure that they look right. So this is going to be my, um, my sort of more pale, uh, pale light green color that's going to be at the base. It's a lot less saturated and uh, lighter uh, so I'm using much more white and gray in the mix. And I'm really going to have to just put it down to see if it's right. And it seems close. Even if the, the color is not exactly right, sometimes I'll just lay it into place and then come in with other colors and try to adjust it to <clears throat> to make it closer to what I actually see. Once you have kind of a foundation, it's sometimes it's easier to to go from there when you have a starting point. Now the back has all these bumps that I drew in initially with uh, burnt umber, but I'm kind of covering them up and. I'm going to come in later with a darker color of this pale yellow to define those little places of shadow. So now I'm making uh, a brighter green using some cadmium yellow, some uh, chromium green, and a little bit of yellow ochre. That'll give me a nice bright green, and I'm using the same brush that I was using for 
the lighter green so there's a lot of white uh, that's already on the brush that's going to make it a little bit lighter and if I needed to get more, more intense as I paint over those grays and, and blacks I'm just going to keep adding a little bit more uh, cadmium yellow to bring it back up and at this point I'm not really trying to copy exactly what I'm seeing um, just putting in a few leaves here and there partially where I see them and partially just where I think they look nice there are some that are kind of leaning over and, and going over the face of the sunflower and some that are sticking up and are visible against the black of the background so I'm trying to give a little variety of different ones these uh, little petals or whatever you call them they have a lot of character and they give the sunflowers a lot of expression so I think the important thing is not to capture each individual one and sort of copy what it looks like but to get a sense of the overall motion and the movement that they create around the edge of the sunflower and that's what I'm trying to do here I mean you could spend hours or days painting something like this and get you know all the details and get everything exactly the way it is and uh, you know you might get something that looks exactly like the sunflowers but you might not actually get the motion of it or the kind of the gesture and sometimes this kind of quick painting you can actually get a lot more of the feeling across than than you would in a more long-term painting the sunflower on the left in the foreground has mostly these kind of lemon yellow leaves and uh, they only turn dark green towards the towards the very tips and then the one on the right you're sort of seeing just the tips and so it looks much more kind of saturated and intense green there's also that little um, that big leaf that's kind of coming out under the sunflower on the right and into the foreground sort of overlapping the face of it so I want to make sure I capture that as well and uh, I can also use the background color to help define those petals so in this case I'm not using any thin brushes I'm just using what maybe number twos and threes maybe a number one bristle brushes only and to get those kind of wispy um, points on the sunflower petals it's too thick for that so I can use the background to sharpen them off a little bit and define them more the thing is once you start using a thin brush you kind of commit to a more detailed painting and because you don't want to have one part or a couple of parts of the painting be very detailed and the rest of it being very loose so in this case I want to keep everything kind of loose the sort of the forward face of this uh, flat cylinder of the sunflower is getting more light so I want to accent it with a little bit brighter color and I'm just mixing these paints sort of relative to what's already there I'm not really trying to match a color exactly to, to what's on the sunflower just something that kind of makes sense for the for what's already there now I'm getting a little bit of a uh, darker 
pale yellow to draw in some of those little dimples on the underside of the sunflower. It's actually one of the more interesting parts of the sunflower to me because it's sort of something you seldom see. And I decided to give that part sort of the main space in the painting, the main part of the composition. And then there's a little part of uh, the sunflower that's completely in sort of a shadow on this bottom side. So I'm using a similar color to the sort of a dimple color, dimple shadow color for that. And I'll darken that a little bit more later. But for now, I'm just working on the dimples. So now I'm going to get a little brighter yellow and uh, kind of bring up the, the places where the, the leaves kind of begin to take on more color. There's uh, several layers of petals that kind of wrap around the edge of the sunflower. And I'm not going to capture it, capture it exactly how it is, because then I would have to sort of get in there with a thin brush and paint those in. I'm just going to try to get an indication of it. Now, depending on how detailed you go, um, leaves can be pretty complex. They uh, tend to fold over each other. They have crinkles. They have different textures on different size, sides. Um, in some ways, they can be almost more difficult than fabric to paint. And fabric is pretty difficult. Um, <clears throat> the main thing to remember is just to try to get the overall lights and darks and uh, from there you can add more detail and if you sort of commit yourself to keeping things loose you can get away with just sort of blocking in a shape and not worrying about all the kind of intricacies if you glance at a painting and you tell you can tell that okay those are leaves you know, that might be enough for certain paintings. And then in certain other cases, it might not be enough. You might have to really get in there and try to break it apart, break all the structure apart and figure out how everything is connected, where the shadow is falling and where things begin and end. So uh, now that my sunflowers are pretty much covered with paint, you know, I have a good base coat there. I'm going to start working on the, the surface, which is pretty simple. It's just a white tabletop. It has a little bit of reflection to it, but I'm not going to, I'm not really seeing a lot of things reflected in it right now. So I'm just going to hit the shadows with a gray color, similar to what I had for the background, just a little bit lighter. And then just block in uh, places that are light with kind of a light gray. Probably don't want to go completely white on anywhere on your painting except for highlights. And that includes white surfaces. So a white surface is never going to be completely white. Um, if you look at a painting, you'll see that things that are, that are shiny, those are the ones that are actually completely white where the, the light is reflected back at you. But something like a white surface would be a tone of gray, even if it's a very light tone. So all I'm doing is just roughly 
filling in the blank spaces with uh, with my light color of the the white surface and just defining a little bit of shadows here and there and you can probably see the advantages of using a tinted surface here if my surface was completely white then I would have to make sure that I um, that I cover all that white but because it's you know it's a tone of kind of this brown those little gaps between colors actually don't bother you quite as much and you can actually leave them and they'll feel completely natural on the painting So now I'm going to get to work on that sunflower. That's probably the most textured surface in the painting. And I'm not going to try to define all the, you know, all the seeds and all the lines that I see there. You're really just going to try to get an indication and uh, sort of like the overall feeling of texture that is there. And uh, I'm going to do that with uh, just um, adding a whole bunch of brush strokes of kind of a thicker paint. And um, try to get the idea across that way. I'm uh, starting with the same color basically that I had there and just laying it on a little thicker. To create a little bit of that variation and uh, as I move around the the sort of the perimeter of the sunflower I hit areas that are darker and so those uh, lighter strokes over the darker surface create even more kind of texture and definition and I'm going to come in later with some other colors but you can already see just like with you know less than a minute of painting that's becoming a lot more interesting and uh, you know you can play around like I'm using a little bit of blue here just to give it a little bit of interest because because why not and then uh, some darker strokes in the middle there where it gets dark and then also defining a few of the cast shadows that are created by those petals around the upper left perimeter of the sunflower and those darks really kind of help the rest of the colors pop and feel a lot more real And as I'm doing this, I'm also trying to kind of notice the direction in which the seeds on the sunflower face are sort of lined up in. There's a bit of a pattern. There's, just, there's some lines that you begin to see. And I'm not really trying to get all of them. Just a few indications here and there that uh, uh, give you a sense of that motion on that surface. So now I'm going to mix up a little bit more of the bright, sort of the brightest green that I can make uh, for the tips of those petals. And I'm using for that a little chromium green, a little bit of um, cadmium yellow pale, and some white. And that should give me a nice bright color. And I'm going to use that for... Uh, adding a little bit more texture also, so I'm kind of making it nice and thick. So I'm just hitting those tips 
and adding a little bit of uh, impasto to those areas. Because I want the, uh, the thickness of the paint to kind of match what's happening on the surface of the sunflower already. And I'm also going to paint this large leaf at the bottom with the same mixture. And one side of it gets quite a bit of light and the other one is in shadow. And if you make some nice clear separation between the two, it begins to look dimensional. But now there's also a lot of shadow sort of underneath that leaf, so I do need to mix a darker green. So I'll use some ultramarine blue and some cad yellow light. Kind of dull it down a little bit with some burnt umber. And that can go in a kind of a very deep shadow. Just continuing to do those little tips that stick out using kind of thick paint. And I have to be kind of judicious here because this sort of thick impasto is going to be really hard to correct if, I, if I'm not happy with where I put it. So sort of being conscious about where, where I do it so I don't have to change it later. I'm beginning to notice that uh, the thickness of the rim of that sunflower and the amount of light that's being caught there is quite a bit thicker in real life. So I'm just kind of squinting and trying to see how thick things are over there and just adding some more of the lighter tones around the edge just to kind of thicken it up a little bit. I'm not trying to exactly copy all the little folds and all the little petals that are happening there. Just trying to get an overall good impression of how big things are. All right, now I think it's time to take a look at the leaf that's taking up a lot of this foreground. And honestly, I don't want, um, I don't want it to distract too much from the subject. I don't want people to stop and look at the leaf before they kind of go in and, you know, move their gaze into the sunflowers and look at those. So I'm not going to give this too much detail. I'm just going to get it to a point where it begins to look like something, like a leaf. And then probably leave it at that. So this is probably not the best lesson on how to paint leaves, but more of a rough patchwork work of strokes to and get it to something that looks like a leaf. As I'm painting, I'm constantly trying to strike a balance between the sort of the minimum amount of detail that I can have so that the eye doesn't question those things and not going overboard and providing so much detail that sort of your eye stops in those places and um, sort of creates a, a place where you kind of get hung up on the details. So overall, I want there to be kind of even, easy flow around the painting uh, with the exception of places where I want people to focus in a little bit more on. So like the center of that back sunflower. So 
just constantly trying to look for that balance. So now I'm noticing that the the tips of the greenery on the sunflowers are not quite as uh, intense green as they are in real life. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit more saturated color and just touch it here and there just to bring that color out a little bit more. And it's it, there's a really intense sort of saturated color on the edges, but then it there's more of a yellow, bright yellow towards the middle of those uh, of those sprigs, and it kind of blends out. And I'm intentionally not using a thin brush to to paint all those tips because once you kind of start with a thin brush you sort of commit it to a certain amount of detail and I'm not willing to do that just yet. So next I'm going to work on the back of this uh, sunflower and add some highlights. So right now I have kind of a middle tone and some shadows and I want to bring in some lighter tones so I'm just using some titanium white yellow ochre and cadmium yellow uh, to create a nice kind of bright light color and the back of the sunflower is actually pretty interesting it has a really cool texture kind of a dimply surface it's part of the reason why I dedicated so much space in the painting to the back of the sunflower and so I want to give it a little bit more attention so I'm just uh, kind of finding those uh, surfaces that are facing the light and adding a little bit of that light color and along with the middle tone and the shadows that's beginning to create some sense of uh, texture and dimensionality and I'm being kind of rough at first just creating some general strokes and then going back in and just touching it up and blending a little bit the transitions between the light and dark until I'm satisfied with it And you don't want to over blend, you don't want to go too far. Once in a while just kind of squint and if it's beginning to look like what you're trying to achieve then you know you can stop. So next what I'm gonna do is just take a palette knife and because I'm not using a thin brush um, I'm just pulling a little bit of paint that's already on the board out to create some of those thinner, lighter points. And uh, it's working pretty well. I don't usually use the palette knife that much uh, in actual painting because I just kind of find that it tends to sort of use up a lot of paint for not a lot of effect. But in this case, I think it worked out pretty well. So Next I'm gonna just work on that shadow a little bit. I sort of realized that the sunflower kind of extended a little further down uh, in that corner and I was kind of cutting it a little bit short before. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of surface and texture there. I'm noticing that I don't have enough uh, yellow along the perimeter of the sunflower. If you kind of look, squint and look at both, you can kind of tell that there's a little bit more of a kind of a yellow strip that goes between this beige back and the kind of the bright green ends of those uh, foliage. 
The same thing on the smaller sunflower. So at this point I'm just kind of touching things up and it's not necessarily drawing, I'm kind of going over the places where I've already sort of established a drawing and just adjusting the color and punching things up a little bit or taking things away as I see fit. And this leaf could use a little bit more definition, so I'm going to use some of my dark color that I used before and then just basically just add a little bit of drawing to this front, this front part of the leaf and sometimes just a little bit of an edge kind of helps to define things. Again, I'm not trying to make this photorealistic or copy it exactly just giving it enough definition to facilitate it makes sense. All right, so let's work a little bit more on the on the back kind of adding a little bit of a definition to the shadow and also and including a little bit of reflected light there. And again, just sort of touching things up here and there. Just, I mean, a lot of this is just instinctual, just where I see things kind of falling apart a little bit, I'll bring out the light and if necessary, I'll add a little bit more shadow or blend things if they need to be blended a little bit to create a smoother transition between light and shadow. And of course I can go a lot further and add a lot more details, but just sort of made a decision up front with this painting that it's gonna be a quick one. It's gonna be more about gesture and brush strokes <clears throat> and overall impression rather than sort of creating a very realistic picture. And I think it's coming together pretty nicely. Now I'm gonna just uh, use the back of the brush and create a little bit of texture on that sunflower, sort of in a direction that the, the seeds are oriented. And it might be a little hard to see, uh, but it creates a nice little, um, a nice texture in the paint that gets that, the movement and the direction across. A couple of highlights on the on the leaves to bring the the shape out just a little bit. I'm just using any of the paint that I have already mixed up. And once you have uh, some colors established on your palette, you really don't need to think too much about you know what colors are going into your into your different colors. So you just use what's there. And so now I'm gonna. Uh, bring out some of those lights in the table. The table is kind of pure white, so I want to I want it to be the brightest thing in the in the painting. So I'm just bringing those up. And I have these little little clips on my easel that hold the painting down. So I just want to make sure there's paint underneath those. There's been a couple of times where I finish a painting and clean up the palette and then realize that I still have sort of bare spots 
where those clips were. And now I'm just going to bring, go back in with my palette knife and sharpen a couple more of those points on the sunflower foliage. Just to bring a little bit more focus to those ends. Because they have a lot of, um, they have a lot of gesture and a lot of personality and I kind of, I want to bring those out as much as I can. And I think with that, I'm just about done. Um, what do you think of this painting? Do you like paintings with a lot more detail or the ones that are a little bit more loose like this? Let me know in the comments. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber, please uh, subscribe to my channel. I try to put out new videos um, as frequently as I can. These do take a lot longer than just me painting and uh, music playing in the background. But I do uh, feel like these are, these might be more helpful to some people. So if this was helpful to you, let me know in the comments. All right. Until next time, have fun painting. Bye-bye.